So no one outside of her own neighborhood had ever heard of Kamala Harris before she showed up as Willie Brown's girlfriend. Then a few years later, she became Montel Williams' girlfriend. Interesting. Long before she met Doug Emhoff, she dated some prominent men, including in 2001, former talk show host Montel Williams. Back then, he was the famous one and had to introduce her to the paparazzi. It's interesting that that tape never played anywhere before the election. It probably wouldn't have made a difference, but it would have been nice to know. Anyway, as you know, Kamala Harris somehow went on to become a senator and then the vice president of the United States. Now, she accomplished all of that without really any support from actual voters. We know that because there's a lot of polling on it. Virtually no one in California, her home state, for example, supported her presidential campaign. And now currently she has an approval rating of 28%, right around Jeffrey Dahmer's approval rating. Why? I don't know. Moments like this. She would tell the story about how so they're marching. And this is back when strollers didn't really have armrest and seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> so they're marching away and, you know, shouting and, and all of that. And then I think it was my Uncle Freddie, you know, uh, looked down and, and looked in the stroller, which was empty. <laughs> 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 and said, where's Kamala? <laughs> and apparently they left me like a block by and I'd fallen out the stroller. <laughs> There you go. And then my mother would tell a funny story about how, like, one day she, and, and I was fussing, and, and, you know, and so I'm fussing and fussing. She, it, it's much cuter when she would tell the story, but she'd say, so then she would look down at me and, Kamala, what do you want? What do you want? And I looked back up at her and I said, freedom! <laughs> <laughs> it's just fascinating watching that, how transparently false it is. It's like everyone went along with what everyone could tell was a lie. It's interesting. So Larry Elder is from California. In fact, he just ran for governor of California. We strongly supported him in that. He's a radio host there. He joins us tonight to assess Kamala Harris. Larry Elder, great to see you. Thank you. You so too. Thank you for having me. You've watched Kamala Harris for years. Like, what do you make of this? Right. It's baffling to me. Well, it is baffling because if you look at it on paper, Tucker, she's a pretty successful politician. She ran for and got elected attorney general in California, beating out her competition. She ran for and got elected senator, uh, beating out her competition. Uh, and then she had this disaster run uh, as vice president. And as you pointed out, even people in California didn't support her. You know, the key to uh, being a successful politician, having been one for eight weeks, a couple of things, uh, it is authenticity uh, and yeah. likability. And she has neither. Uh, and uh, part of it is because uh, you look at things like her record as AG. She was known as a soft on crime, uh, pardon me, hard on crime AG. And then she got kind of busted during the uh, debate with uh, Tulsi Gabbard when she pointed out yeah. that she prosecuted marijuana offenders, not 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 uh, possession, but but offenders, dealers, and then joked about marijuana uh, on a radio program. Uh, she also. Uh, uh, brag that she was uh, the last person in the room when Joe Biden made the decision to uh, pull out of Afghanistan, which meant she part of that decision. And the only reason, in my, my opinion, she became vice president is because she checked all the boxes. The Democrats in this woke era are no longer going to have two white males on the ticket. It's got to be at least a person of color, uh, hopefully a person of color who's a female. So she checked all the boxes and, and has proven itself to be basically utterly incompetent. Uh, they're now backbiting. She'd even accused, or at least one of her staffers has accused Joe Biden of being racist. So she's not unwilling to pull the race card in order to defend herself. And that's offended a lot of people. You, you, you played her laugh. She has this cackle that a lot of people just find off-putting. Uh, when she gets into a tough position, when she doesn't have an answer for something, uh, when somebody uh, corners her, she, re she reverts to this silly laughter. And it, uh, and it just angers people. And Tucker, if I can say one more thing, uh, it's not fixed in stone. The good news for her is that 2024 uh, is a mile away. Uh, and as you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's an eternity in politics. And you can yeah. change that. Ronald Reagan was perceived by all of us who knew him as a sunny, optimistic guy. But a lot of Democrats didn't feel that way until he was shot. And here he is, the most anger he could summon against his would-be assassin was, what's that guy's beef? And as he's being wheeling to the operating room, he tells the doctors, I hope you guys are all Republicans. And he told Nancy, Pol Nancy Reagan, uh, I forgot to duck. And people said, wow, he really is genuine. He really is likable. Yeah. So it's possible to change it. But given Colin Harris's numbers, given her track record, given this laugh, given the way she's run away from her record as being tough on crime, she had the most left-wing uh, voting record, 
more left wing than Bernie Sanders and now and then position herself as a centrist. Sometimes she says she's a black woman when she ran. Sometimes she says she's an Asian Indian woman when she ran out here in California. So she's perceived to be utterly inauthentic and utterly unlikable. Yeah, I'd rather have uh, I'd rather have Willie Brown any day. And I don't agree with Willie Brown, but at least he's a real person. No, I think very nicely That's put right. Larry Elder. Thank you. Good to see you tonight.